So in this video, I'll be showing you how I made this pendant using bismuth. And if you don't know what bismuth is, it's a metal that can melt around 500 degrees. And when it starts to cool, it'll make crystals. And if you remove the remaining liquid after crystals are formed, you get these cool, colorful crystal formations. So this is going to be my first time using bismuth. So I'm just going to make a basic copper bezel to house it all in and then see how everything turns out. So let's get started. So to make the bezel, I'm going to be using two pieces of copper sheet metal that are two different thicknesses, and I'm going to use a stone so I can shape one of the pieces around it to make the bezel, but I won't be actually using this stone. So I'll be making the bezel from this piece of metal. To do this, all I need to do is use a pair of dividers and make a line across one edge. I'm doing just about all of this by eye, so there's no exact measurements for this. You could use thicker metal for this, or you can even buy pre-made bezel wire if you like. Since this metal is so thin, I can just use some metal shears to cut through it instead of using a jeweler saw. Just be careful if you do it this way because it leaves a serrated edge and it becomes very sharp. So just be careful not to cut yourself. Now that that's done, I need to anneal this piece to make it a little bit more malleable so I can actually work with it. And to do this, I'm just going to use my torch and my soldering block and heat the piece until it starts to glow and then quench it in some water. So after heating the piece and quenching it, I'm going to need to put it into a pickling solution to remove any of the fire scale or oxidation on the piece. While I'm waiting for that to clean off in the pickling solution, I'm going to make a couple jump rings. So I'm going to be using one of these jump rings on the pendant I'm going to be making, and I'm going to fuse it shut so it has no gap. But in order to do this, I had to use my Smith's little torch, and if you don't have one of these, this could be very difficult, especially at this size, so you could just use a piece of solder here. So now that my bezel wire is all clean, I'm going to shape it around my stone, and then mark it and cut it so it's going to be around the same shape. So once I have everything cut to length, I'm going to use a miter vise to make sure that both of the ends are completely flat. This will make it so the solder joint will have no gaps or any problems like that. And since I'm going to be pouring liquid metal into this, I need to make sure that there's no gaps on anything. For me, this leaves a little bit of a burr on my pieces that I just use some wire cutters to cut off. But once that's all cleaned up, I'm going to start shaping this bezel to make both ends become completely square with one another and as tight as possible so I can solder them together. And I'm going to be using a piece of hard solder to do this. For pieces like this, I like to use the third hand to hold them, and then I'll flux the area that I'm going to be soldering, and then place a piece of solder inside of the piece, so it has less of a chance of falling off with the heat. Another way to do it is just heat your piece with the flux on it already, and once it turns white and dry, then place your piece of solder on top of it. So once that's done, I'm going to quench my piece and then fit it around my stone to get its shape back. And just keep in mind, the bezel is not meant to be perfect or even to fit the stone properly. It's just supposed to be in the shape of the stone that I'm using. So once I have it to the shape I want, I'm going to sand the top and bottom of this to remove the serrated edge on one side and to even out the bottom side so I can solder it flat. And since this metal is extremely thin, it's very easy to bend, so I need to be very careful when doing this or I'll just crush the piece in my hand. So once it's all done, I'm going to take this piece and put it into my pickle pot to clean it all up. And so it'll be ready for soldering. So for the back plate of my piece, I'm going to be using a small piece from this sheet of copper. I'm just going to use my stone as a reference and then cut a piece out of it that's a little bit bigger than what I'm going to need. So now that I have all the parts that I need, we can start soldering them all together. So to start off, I'm going to flux the back piece completely and then put some flux on the other two pieces and set them how I want them. So you might have noticed that you can see a light through the bezel and the back plate 
which is not an ideal thing when making bezels. So hopefully when heating this, I'm going to be able to fill all that area or just push the piece down and make the solder flow through it and end up with no gaps whatsoever. So now I'm going to use about five pieces of medium solder. I'm going to place four pieces inside of the bezel and one piece inside of the ring on the top. So now I'm just going to slowly and evenly heat this piece from the top and bottom using the tripod and the screen setup that I normally use until I see the solder flow and make sure that everything is all uniform and there's no gaps. Once that's all done, I'm going to throw this into the pickle pot to get it all cleaned up and then I can start cutting it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a center punch in the middle of the ring so I can fit my saw blade through there and do a piercing cut and cut out the inside of that. You can also do this without a center punch and just use a drill and drill a hole through the center. So now all I have to do is put the blade through this hole and then reset the saw into the saw frame. And then just cut to the inside part of the ring and then follow it around to cut this piece out. Once that's done, I'll just release my saw blade from the frame, pull this out, and then reset it again and cut the perimeter of this entire piece. Once that's done, I'm just going to take one of my hand files and file down the edges of this to get rid of any of the burrs or weird lines from the saw blade. And then I'll finish the whole thing up with a rotary sanding disc that is about 60 grit. So once I have that rough finish done, I'm going to darken this piece and patina it using Jack's Chemicals Brass and Copper Darkener. So now that that's all done, washed off, and dried, and we're going to be melting down this, which is basically raw 99% bismuth. And to do this, all you need is a little pan that you're never going to use ever again for food, and a stove, or a hot plate. And before I go to the stove and melt everything down, this is how I'm going to have this set up, just in case if I spill anything, it doesn't get everywhere or burn me. It's basically just a big jar or a container that's not going to melt, and a screen on the top so I can set my piece on top of it, so if it overflows or spills, it goes inside of the jar. So this is one pound of bismuth, and it's extremely dense, similar to how lead is really dense for how much you get of it. So I really should have ordered about two to three pounds of this so I could make extra little crystals that I could use on other pieces instead of pouring it into something. So I'll be ordering more of this soon, but so you know, and if you're planning on doing anything with it, order more than one pound. And once I get more in the mail, I'll be making other videos on the crystals that this makes. All right, well, here goes the first pour. And so far, so good. I'm going to use my tweezers to see if it's hardened up at all. And seeing that it has already, I'm going to pour the rest of it out into the rest of the bismuth. And from the looks of it, it hardened extremely fast and didn't really form any crystals or coloration. But I was able to get a couple cool looking crystals out of the bismuth pot as it was still liquid. So I tried this same process over and over again with different changes and variations of what I did and found out that it's a heat based thing. So when I poured it into this bezel, it cooled down so quickly because the bezel was basically room temperature and it's copper so it absorbed all the heat and dissipated it. One upside to this is I can just melt this bismuth out of this piece and that's how I was able to keep doing it over and over again. So I'm going to show that now and then I'm going to show the final version of this. And the reason why I'm going to skip to the last one is because I doubt you want to see me failing at this 11 more times. So 
So to make this whole thing work, you have to heat your piece until it becomes red hot. Also, the heating of this piece over and over again to get to this point made the patina that I put on here pretty much useless. And now the entire piece is fire scaled. So I'll be taking that off after I get the bismuth to work properly. And now that it's all up to temperature, I can pour the bismuth directly into it again. So now all I have to do is wait for it to cool down a bit, and I'm going to test it every so often with my tweezers by actually putting them into the liquid bismuth and seeing if any parts are starting to harden up. And once I feel that there's a bunch of parts that are actually hard, I'm going to pour the rest of the liquid out. Just be careful at this point because it's still extremely hot and you can't touch it with your hands or it will burn you. As you could probably tell, this is a very temperature and time sensitive thing, so it takes a couple of tries to get it right. So after all that, I think this actually came out pretty good. I just need to clean up all the copper, and then I'm going to seal the entire thing with some really strong lacquer, so it doesn't react with anyone's skin or tarnish. So before I clean it up and everything, I'm going to bend the bezel in on it a little bit so just to make sure this is going to stay in because I had some of them actually just fall out on some of the other test pieces and I don't want that to happen to this one. So I'm just going to go around it with a dowel or a wood handle and just kind of press in the bezel. Then I'm just going to clean up the copper with this 60 grit sanding wheel and make sure not to use it on the bismuth itself or any polishing on the bismuth because it'll take off any of the coloration on it and it'll grind it down really fast. So now that everything's all cleaned up I'm going to add the jump ring onto this so when I spray the sealer it can seal everything at once. So for sealing my pieces, I use this piece of wood that has a couple nails in it and some wire to hang my stuff from. So I'll be using this sealer and I'll make sure to leave links to this and just about everything in this video in the description so you can get them for yourself if you need them. So all I need to do is spray the front and back of this and maybe underneath with some light coats and I'll wait for this to dry and come back and do this about three to four more times to make sure that it has a decent coat of sealant on this. And here's some looks at the final piece. So if you liked this video, or found it useful, feel free to leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, or want to see me work with Bismuth some more, leave a comment. If you'd like more videos like this one, and be updated when I upload, feel free to subscribe to this channel. I try to put out new videos every week. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.